Welcome to MET 220 Heat Power. This is a very different semester. I've never been through one like this before. I'm used to teaching in person, so I apologize for anything that doesn't go right from the beginning. Please give me feedback as we go, because if you give me feedback, I can change things. If you don't, well, I, I can't. So let's jump into an introdu introduction for the course. Um, it will be run through Brightspace, so make sure you can log into Brightspace and get everything you need there. Of course, the particular course we're looking at is 220 Heat Power. And so if you click on that course in Brightspace, there's uh, initially announcements. If you haven't seen Brightspace before, that's the page that comes up by default. Um, I've got some notes there about the fact that all the lecture material is going to be delivered via video. Of course, if you show up the first day of class, that's great. Uh, you're welcome to. Um, basically, I'm going to give the same introduction there that I'm giving now. So if you don't show up or if you're not cleared to attend campus, that's okay. Um, you can still get all of the course information. So read through the announcements and make sure you keep an eye on them. Um, but the place to go first to really get into the course is content. So if you click on content at the top, um, there's several different items here. Let's start with the syllabus. Let's just go through that first. So here's my name, my contact information, and so forth. I'll probably add my cell phone to this eventually. Right now I don't have it on there. I just use my office phone more often than my cell. Technically our class is located in room 1162, and we will be there for some demonstrations and projects and things like that. We will still have to meet, but we're minimizing that in order to minimize spread of the virus. Um, here's our course objective, and I can tell you that you probably won't really understand everything in the course objective that's stated here. There really are two parts to this course. One is the thermodynamics part and the other is heat transfer. This is a lot of information in one course. So do your best to keep up. Uh, toward that end, when I post the videos that are the lecture videos, I will have a quiz and that quiz will have a due date on it that is essentially the end of the regular class period where I would normally be lecturing. This is a Tuesday, Thursday class, so I'll, I'll typically lecture Tuesdays and Thursdays in this class. And so the quiz will be due at the end of class, uh, and I can't remember if this is a morning or afternoon. I think it's a morning, yeah, there it is. It's a morning class. So the quiz will be due at noon. I expect you to watch the videos, and I found that if I don't give students a hard cutoff on when they should watch the videos, they just don't. They put it off. And so what, I've, what I'm doing is not really putting a cutoff date on the videos, but the quizzes associated with the videos that make sure you watch the videos uh, and ask you particular questions from the videos uh, will be due at the end of class. So that way I'm trying to help you stay on task and keep a schedule, even though we're not physically present in a room. Now one thing I'm going to do also, I am going to, um, you know what? Actually, I might make the quiz due an hour after 12. That way you can watch the videos by 12 and then um, take the quiz. you got an hour or so to take the quiz. And it's not going to be a tough quiz where you have to break out the calculator and solve a bunch of problems. It'll be more concept stuff. Now, there are other quizzes, too, in this course that I've created. And they are concept quizzes that check your understanding of the information a little deeper. Uh, the quizzes I'm going to associate with videos are more just to make sure that you have uh, watched the videos on time. The other quizzes, the concept quizzes I'm going to get, go a lot deeper, and they're actually from the text. I took all the concept questions from the text. Well, I picked out the ones that I wanted and included them in the course. So anyway, um, tell you more about that later if you want, because I really like the concept quizzes that are uh, in the course already. Anyway. Uh, those, well, I'll get to that in just a second. I'll tell you there's a, a different due date for uh, uh, lecture quizzes versus concept quizzes, and I'll get into that in a minute. So you may or may not understand our objective in the course, but let me tell you that this course really gets at the heart of mechanical engineering. It really gets at uh, some very fundamental and very important, really principles that are, are significant to a lot of science, not just uh, our particular branch of engineering, but even the sciences in general. 
Um, there is a required textbook. You need the first edition, not the second edition. Make sure you do not get the second edition because I know where kind of all the bugs are in this text. It's a very cheap book. I've had students tell me they've gotten it literally for four dollars before. So you should be able to find this text online. I have posted the first few chapters for you. I'll show you where they are at in a, a minute. But I've posted the first few chapters so that you don't have to get rush shipping or anything on the text. Uh, just look up the ISBN number on Google or whatever your favorite search engine is. You'll find it pretty quickly and just, just buy it and get it on its way. As long as you have it within, you know, you probably want it for the first exam and we'll get to when that is uh, soon. In fact, I may not have posted everything you need before the first. I think I did. We'll check that as well. Anyway, you probably care a lot about the grading. So let's talk about that. Homework quizzes and case studies I've got set as 15% of your grade. Uh, the project is 10% and uh, three two-hour exams are 75%. Now, I really probably should say projects here because I have uh, two separate projects. One project is a sort of a design build project near the end of the semester. The other project is a perpetual motion machine. I challenge you to build a perpetual motion machine. Now the perpetual motion machine, I usually typically don't call that a project. I usually put that in as a quiz essentially. Um, the case studies are also really important so probably what I'll do is I'll update this document eventually to represent the uh, or you know we could just call the uh, the um, uh, perpetual motion machine a case study that would work uh, but anyway I don't intend to change the the breakdown of the grade the exams are pretty heavily weighted and that's probably what you care about at this point uh, quizzes there are two types of quizzes as I have mentioned there will be lecture quizzes as well as the concept quizzes and you'll need to complete all of those all right now I don't grade like everyone else. I don't grade on a straight scale. Basically what I do is I, at the end of the semester, put all of the students' percentages into Excel. So every student has from zero to 100% of course credit. Okay, if I give extra credit, you could have say 101%, for example. But I put all students in order from lowest credit earned to highest. Uh, of course weighted by what I've shown you here. And then I just choose uh, places where there are large differences in student grades to make my uh, grade breaks. So there's no guarantee, for example, that grade breaks are going to be at 90, 80, 70, 60, so forth, right? Uh, that's a straight scale. And so students often ask, well, how am I doing in terms of a grade? What would I get right now? That's a good question. I can help you figure that out if you want. But what you really need to know is that historically, my grades usually fall, you know, just just below a straight scale. So typically 80 to 90 percent is an A, 70 to 80 percent is a B, and so forth. That's just the way this has gone historically. And I've taught the course for, I don't know, too many years now. I've, I've lost track. Now that's not guaranteed, but I can guarantee your, your grade will be no worse than a straight scale. I promise you that. All right, inclement weather won't bother us as much this semester because we won't be on campus near as much. I do have some demonstrations and things that I want you to show up for, but we don't have a lot of labs or anything like that. Uh, rather, I substitute the demonstrations and the project work. Um, there is still homework, and the homework, in my opinion, is critical. It is the place where you actually apply the concepts and learn them, okay? You're not applying them to real practice, but you're applying them to or you're trying to apply the principles to a problem and get a reasonable answer uh, from your solution. So make sure you read through this. Most of your work I imagine is going to be submitted online so make sure you have cam scanner or something else for your phone where you can scan the the homework pages. You will have to put all of them in order in a PDF file. I have a lot of students who for whatever reason will scan the pages in some random order and I have to run back and forth through the PDF trying to figure out whether or not you accomplished all the homework. As long as I see that you gave a valid effort to each problem, I will give you full credit for that problem even if you didn't get it right. I'm trying to encourage you to work on the homework and not be afraid of it because in my opinion the homework is by far the place where you learn the most. Now 
if you guys know me, I have posted, as I do in all my other classes, video solutions for the homework. Now, you can use these video solutions in a very bad way. You can just sit down and watch season 10 of CISC if you want, right? Just watching the homework and copying it. That doesn't work very well. You need to struggle with the problems. It's kind of like saying, well, I'm going to go bench press some weight, but I'm going to let the spotter do all the lifting for me. You're not going to gain any muscle that way, right? In the same way, you won't gain any benefit or learning or understanding if you're letting me work the problem for you and you're just copying. The purpose of those homework solutions is so that when you get stuck, you can go see how I'm approaching the problem at first, pause the video, go back and maybe take a different direction, or it helps you get unstuck. Maybe you can't find a value in the book that you need. Um, you know, there are a lot of physical properties and data in the book that's very useful and we'll reference them extensively. I still recommend tabbing your book even though we're doing this virtually because when you add tabs to your book in areas that I suggest, you'll find that you reference those pages quite often and that'll be helpful during exams. All right, now if you submit paper to me, that's fine. We can figure out a way to do that. You just need to make sure that you have stapled all of the pages together. Now, I am going to be a lot more uh, particular this semester. I n understand from past experience with my own uh, nature and students' nature that we really need structure. We need something that pushes us to get things done by a certain time. And so if we don't have you know, uh, classes where we're going to meet and that's where you get your lecture, uh, due dates and things can seem to slide a little bit. So I'm going to really enforce due dates. That's why I'm including the quizzes at the end of the presentations, for example, uh, is to kind of keep us on track. Now, information, uh, further information about your homework, please make sure that all of your work is completely legible even after you've scanned it and put it into a PDF file. If I can't read it, I'm not going to give you credit for it. In the past, I've done a lot of work trying to figure out what the scratch marks on the paper mean and understanding what the student has done to see if they've made a reasonable effort to accomplish the homework. But if I can't read it, I'm going to be a little more harsh this semester. So if you're used to me being very lenient, I may be quite different this semester. Um, Quizzes will be implemented online. They will be on Brightspace. Uh, make sure that your Brightspace account is working. That's obviously going to be critical, especially this semester. Uh, the, the concept quizzes that I'm giving you will be due at the end of the first class day of the week. So we're a Tuesday, Thursday class. So at the end of the day on Tuesday, your concept quiz is due. Now, the concept quiz will probably take you a little more time to think about and to consider than the lecture quizzes. The lecture quizzes will be pretty light questions, not things like what was the color of my shirt, but you know, what do we call um, molecules bouncing around the room? What kind of energy is that? Well, the answer is thermal energy, okay? So that's pretty simple once you've watched a lecture to, to answer. Um, so there was something else, but I've lost it. We'll come back to it. All right, exams will be conducted online. I don't intend to have all of you sitting in a classroom uh, to take exams. Uh, but during that, you'll have to be on video conference with me in order to start and finish the exam. I want you there. I want your video camera on for the entirety of the exam. Um, and the final may be comprehensive. No promises. It's usually not, but it may be. Now, oh, I know what it was I was going to tell you. Another thing I'm going to do during the regularly scheduled class time, I'm going to be in my video conference room. And I'll have a link to that on the announcements page. I just haven't decided yet whether I want to use Zoom or WebEx. Right now I'm leaning towards WebEx, but it may be Zoom. We'll see. Anyway, um, you'll have to be in the video conference with me in order to take the exam. Oh, and what I was saying about class, during the regularly scheduled class, I'll just be working at m probably in my office or something, and I'll just leave my uh, video camera on, and I'll be in the room. And if you want to come in and ask questions or talk about the course, anything you want, that's fine. In fact, I'll probably have my video camera on most of the time when I'm at work. So you're welcome to drop in anytime. It's kind of like having an, you know, my office door open all the time. Uh, we're not allowing you guys to come up to the faculty suite and see us in person, but you can come into my virtual uh, room anytime you want. And uh, I'll be glad to talk to you about whatever you need. All right, um, LinkedIn requests I will accept now. Facebook friend requests I don't accept until you graduate, but I, I welcome both. 
guidelines for quarantine and isolation. I'm not going to go through these because I want you to read them. Okay, so please read through this. Uh, both of these, it's, it's less than a page, and that way you'll know what to do in case of uh, sickness or concern or whatever you, you have. Here's what we're supposed to be able to do by the end of the course, uh, or you are supposed to be able to do. So read through that. You probably won't understand a lot of it. That's okay. Uh, but you'll hopefully learn a lot in the class. Now, I've got a tentative schedule set up here. I've got it by week, so week of, so this would be the Monday, for example. Well, we have class Tuesday and Thursday, and the first thing we're going to do is go through introduction, basic concepts, those sorts of things. And as we go through, you can see which chapter we're going through and uh, what the topic will be. Now, I don't require that you read the text. I do suggest that you read it, especially if there's something you haven't understood that I've tried to describe. Say something about heat capacity. Maybe you didn't understand what I was saying. Go to that section of the book and read it. The author is a, a good author and he has some uh, kind of a different way of explaining it than I do, and that might help you understand. Of course, you're welcome to talk to me and ask me questions as well, so whatever works for you. Uh, I do recommend, though, that you keep your textbook close by during lecture, uh, even if you're just watching the videos online, which I guess most of us will be, right? But um, keep your textbook close by and make sure you get some tabs because we are going to tab your book like crazy. There are some really valuable pages. There are some things you need to highlight. There are some mistakes that need to be corrected. So make sure you have a pen or a pencil close by where you can mark in the book. I highly recommend that. It's kind of funny. I've seen books that students have bought that are used that actually have the same notes that I recommend. Now, I don't know if that book somehow made its way through my class or other professors are making the same changes or change recommendations to their students, but um, you may happen to get a used book that already has a bunch of the changes that I'm going to suggest, but they are very important. They're important that you know where things are and that you corrected problems. We are not going to th go through the book in a uh, completely linear fashion. We're actually going to go through some introductory concepts and things. That's the first third of the course or so, and then we have a test over those. Then we jump over into heat transfer. Now, it's kind of a shame because when I was in college, I took a whole course on heat transfer. We get about a third of one course of heat transfer. So. Hopefully I can teach you uh, everything that you need to know, uh, at least an introduction to it, about heat transfer. And then uh, we have our second exam, which mainly covers heat transfer. Then we go into more hardcore thermodynamics concepts. Now don't be afraid of thermo. It's not a terribly difficult concept or, or a subject once you understand the concepts. It's understanding the concepts that's important. Now, in my opinion, something like dynamics is a more difficult topic than thermodynamics, and the reason is because in dynamics, we have to use vectors, whereas in thermodynamics, we're dealing with scalar things. Energy is a scalar, not a vector. It doesn't have direction. Same thing with power. So, um, there are some reasons why thermodynamics uh, has a reputation for being difficult, but if you let me be your guy and you listen to what I say, I think you'll be able to learn something about it. I know when I went through my training, I didn't care too much for thermodynamics. It wasn't my favorite uh, subject, but now that I understand it more deeply and I understand how fundamental energy and power are to everything we do, I appreciate it much more and I think I understand it much better. And I'll try to include some examples. I went riding with my daughter over the summer. We did a lot of bike riding. And uh, there are some things that I experienced that I want to share with you that I think will help you understand energy power and, and how all these things work a little bit better. It turns out she just learned to ride her bike last summer. I taught her how to ride a bike. Uh, and this summer it was, you know, my plan was more, okay, now that you've ridden one bike, I'm going to get you a bigger bike and you're going to learn to ride it and ride it better than you, you did your small starter bike. And she's come a long way. I'm really proud of her, but I'll end up talking too much about her as we go, I'm sure. So here are the chapters, and you can kind of see how this is laid out. Now, this is a tentative schedule. I don't know if, I, yeah, I did write that. This is a tentative schedule. It's not set in stone. I have had times in the past with this class where I've, you know, given an exam and students performed horribly, and I said, okay, wait a second, something's wrong. Let's go back and let's cover some concepts again. I want you to learn. That is my main goal. I love this topic. I love all of our discipline in mechanical. I even am very interested in electrical and other fields of engineering. I want you to enjoy it too, and I want you to see it in your everyday life just as, as I do. So that's really my goal, is to help you learn. All right, 
there are some things in Brightspace that I'm not crazy about. One is what they call the table of contents. I don't know why it's set up this way, but the table of contents really just brings up everything else that's below it over here in the right window. I hardly ever use that. Instead, I just go through the various uh, links on the left. Um, I do have a start here section, and the main thing for this is you desperately need to have a good internet connection. I do not recommend taking this phone completely on your phone okay most of you will have cell phones or smartphones um, there is a good app that Brightspace has I do recommend it but it's not the best way to view this course now Brightspace is supposed to be more mobile friendly but really I don't think you want to take this course completely on a phone or a mobile device you need a computer you need a regular internet connection to make this uh, uh, work. There are some sort of boilerplate standard things, um, which I've actually added to, that Purdue includes. It's sort of the, the default stuff that they include with the course when I set it up. I've left those alone here. I did include one other thing. How to study efficiently. Eh, where is it? Student help and success. Let's try that. Yeah, how to study efficiently. So if you go here, I do recommend watching this video. This is, it'll come up in a second, but it's just a YouTube video, and the um, uh, professor here tells you how to study efficiently. It's a really good, I can't remember how long it is, let's see. Okay, so it's about an hour long. I don't require that you watch that, but I do recommend that you watch it. Uh, I think it will help you quite a lot. Let's see, what else do we have? Accessibility. Um, you know what, somehow I think I missed something in the syllabus. Let me double check. Yeah, there is something missing here. I'm sorry, I've forgotten to add it. If you need special accommodations, please let me know as soon as possible. If you get extra time on exams, for example, I need your accommodations letter as soon as possible. You can send that to me via email. Um, but in order to give you the extra time on tests, I need to know how much you get, and that's what that, that paper, that uh, accommodations uh, document tells me. So make sure you give me that before the first test. Uh, we won't be in the building much, so there's not a whole lot of concern of being able to enter and exit the building, but if you need help with that, please let me know as well. Uh, also, there are university policies. These are, again, boilerplate things, but they uh, cover what we are and are not supposed to do in particular students and and me so make sure you go through those and are familiar with them you may already be since you're uh, this is a 200 level course so you're technically probably sophomores one thing I really miss that we won't get to do this semester I always take my students on a tour of the hydroelectric power station in Louisville it's on Shipping Port Island it's been there since the 20s I think it was 1927 when it was built something like that Unfortunately, LG&E, who runs that plant, won't accept tours right now for obvi obvious reasons, and Purdue won't let us go on tours. So, uh, to me, it's a, a big loss. Uh, oh, there's my cell number. It's still the same if you want it. Uh, but there are some videos they've produced to talk about that generation station, and as we go along in lieu of the tour, I will have you watch these and probably add some exercise around it. There's also some... Uh, information about the types of turbines that are used and it was really interesting I've been taking students on tours of this uh, station oh for probably I don't know 10 years now something like that and during that time they they have eight turbines they actually pulled apart one turbine at a time and rebuilt it it was really neat to be able to see all the guts of the thing and see the uh, everything that goes into them because when you look at these turbines you might look at this and say well how big is it well the the distance from tip to tip if i remember i was about 15 feet for one of these things and then the shaft this this doesn't show you the whole shaft the shaft is three stories tall and is about foot and a half two foot in diameter it's a huge pieces of machinery you might think that this produces a tremendous amount of power actually it does not it produces about 100 megawatts now that sounds like a lot and that's a lot more than your house uses but it's nowhere near what a steam powered turbine typically produces which is about two and a half times that for one steam turbine but anyway we'll get into that also most people have lived around here all their lives and didn't realize or maybe realized and never visited the McAlpine uh, lock and dam that we have that allows traffic to go up and down the river so I've included a video there for that. 
Uh, my schedule is here so you can kind of see uh, when I'm around. As I said, I should be on or in my virtual room most of the time. Uh, but you can see my schedule here, so if you're having trouble getting in touch with me for some reason, I may be helping another student in a particular class. Uh, there is a big gap here from 3 to 4, and the reason for that gap is that I have to pick up my daughter uh, during that time uh, quite often, and so I, I can't be available during then. I don't mind going past 5, though. You see I've, I've ended it at 5, but I am happy to go past 5. Even last semester when we had to go online and do everything virtually, I met with a lot of students late 7, 8, 9 at night. I, I don't mind. I'm glad to help. Now, Fridays, I do, I do try to cut it off. Once I've picked up my daughter from school on Fridays, I'm pretty much done. I'm ready for a break. You probably are, too. But if you really need to meet with me on a Friday in the evening, I'm glad to do that, too. I'm not a big party animal. I don't go out and you know, do anything like that, so I'm still available. It's just most of the time we're all pretty much worn out by that time uh, of the week. All right, what else? Here's the textbook, and that's what, it's look, what it looks like. There's the ISBN number again. This price is way off. If you pay that much for it, you have been really ripped off. Don't pay that much for it. Literally, you can get this thing for, you know, six dollars or so. And like I said, I think the lowest price I've ever heard, heard a student say was about four dollars. And of course, I'm sure there was shipping on top of that, but uh, I used a book for a long time. I used one of these for a long time, and it kind of fell apart. You might see in some of my example or, or um, homework videos that I'm using pieces of the book and, and joking about it. Well, I used it so much, it fell apart, and then I thought, what am I doing? I can get another one of these books so cheap. Why am I bothering with this book that's falling apart? So I did. I got a couple of them. Um, now, if you click on each of these, you'll be taken to PDF files for each of those chapters. The appendix, well, apparently not. I don't know why that's happening. Page not found. I'll fix that. But supposedly, once I get that working right, uh, you should be able to click on each one of these and just download the PDF file associated with it. The, the appendix is extensive in this book. It has a lot of reference information and you'll really need that. So make sure you grab the appendix. The index is okay. It's for looking up terms. And then the Heisler-Grober charts, don't worry about those right now. You'll need those later in heat transfer. You can go ahead and download them if you want once I get the links working. But you don't really need them right away. I do have projects in the course. I do have some case studies. The case studies aren't showing up yet. Uh, there's a reason for that. And usually what we do is a investigation build uh, video project where you investigate something related to energy that's interesting to you, uh, energy or power that's related to the class, and you build something to demonstrate it. So one thing I would really like to do eventually is build a slot car racetrack that is powered by exercise bikes. You, you can go watch these videos if you want, but there's a couple of videos here of, pardon me, slot car tracks where participants get on an exercise bike. The harder you pa uh, pedal, the faster your car goes, which is, I think, pretty neat. So I've had students in the past, student teams, build something like this. They didn't build a four-lane racetrack. They built a single lane and a single cyclist. Um, but with varying levels of success, and it's, it's pretty interesting. So that's a fun thing to do, but really what you're doing is a power conversion, right? From the, the human being's legs to the car moving around the track. Uh, other students found a flashlight, a very high-powered flashlight someone had built themselves and said, hey, that's neat, I want to build that. I do recommend watching this. It's pretty amazing. They can make nighttime look like day, essentially. So I had some stu students build a flashlight like that. Now, this is interesting because, of course, there's power conversion from the chemical energy in the battery to the light, which is a different form of energy, but in that process, there's a lot of loss. It's not a very efficient process. Uh, now, LEDs are getting better and better in terms of efficiency, but things like incandescents are extremely efficient. That's why we are trying to not use them anymore. And so there's a lot of heat generation. You see, it turns out you can't destroy energy. And so if the energy changes or comes out of the battery in, you know, and was in chemical form in the battery, it has to take on some other form. Well, it's either going to take on light or waste heat. And so there's a heat transfer problem here as well, which was interesting in that project. Uh, here's a thermoelectric cooler that Great Scott uh, made, and I thought it was interesting. No one has done that yet. Uh, I have a wood gasification boiler, so I'm interested in wood gasification. Some students built something along those lines one semester, and I've got several videos there. There have been many other projects, and I'll try to, I forgot to do that, I'll try to add some more videos here of past student projects from the class, so you can kind of see the quality and the, the um, uh, 
level of achievement that I expect. All right, homework. As I said, homework is where you actually learn. You'll notice that I've got all of the homework sets already set out and their due dates set. Now these due dates are not set in stone. If you find that you're really struggling and don't understand something in the homework and you want more time, please let me know. And I can change, of course, due dates and accommodate uh, if a majority of the class wants to change the due date. I'll, I will consider it. I don't promise that I will, but I will consider it. Now, once the due date has passed and everyone has turned in their work, I will turn on solutions for these that are PDF solutions. Now, I don't have any course modules showing over here, but soon you'll start to see course modules like a, a week one, chapter one, or something like that, where everything for that week or that chapter is in the learning module. And you'll see there that I've got uh, video solutions to all of the homework already posted. So don't feel like you can't ask questions or you can't get any help. The videos are already there and available for you. So um, there will be two forms of homework solutions. There's the video solutions, which you can watch at any time, even while you're doing your homework. Although, of course, as I've already described, you shouldn't just copy them. But there will also be PDF versions of the homework where you'll see my writing on engineering paper. And those are sometimes a little more useful for referencing during exams. So that's why I give you those as well. Um, beyond that, quiz one is already set up here. There's already a due date. And this will be the concept quiz. This is not the lecture quiz, but the concept quiz. I, I haven't created the lecture quizzes yet. I will do that. One of the things I have to do is create the lecture videos, but then also write down uh, questions related to those. So that's an introduction for the class. If you have any questions, I will be in my, uh, of course, I will be in the actual introduction classroom the first day. Uh, after that, we're going to break and do pretty much everything virtually, although there are some demonstrations. And I'll let you know with an announcement when you'll need to come in uh, for demonstrations. And I'll try to give you a week's or a week or two's notice, something like that. Um, so that you can plan to be in class physically. Now, this class, let me see, I don't recall. Some of my classes are small enough that we'll fit in the room even with the uh, reduced room capacities. Let's see, our current roster does exceed the current capacity. So right now only 12 students are allowed into 1162 and we have 15 in this class. So for demonstrations and so forth we will have to break up into two groups. So probably what we'll do is say have half the class, you know, roughly seven or eight students come in on the Tuesday. And you know, whenever it's convenient for you guys is fine with me. As long as they don't exceed the classroom capacity of 12, it's fine. And then the other half or so of the class can come in on Thursday to see the demonstrations or to work on the project or whatever it is that uh, we need to do. Now for the first day, you can either choose to stay home and just watch this uh, introductory video and whatever other a video I can add on top of it to lecture for the first day of class. You can do that or you can come to class. It's up to you. Uh, I know that some students will probably just come to class by default because that's what they expect. Uh, some students are probably keeping a very close eye on, on Brightspace and may say, hey, I, why well, I drive to campus if I don't have to? I don't have any questions. Here's, you know, here's what I need to know about the introduction to the course, so I'm just going to stay home and watch it. That's fine. I have no problem with that. Um, I will say the class begins at 10 and I'm going to accept the first 12 people to show up. Uh, after that, I have to close the door and say no more people are allowed. So you may have to wait until 11 if you're not there uh, at 10. All right, if you have any questions, please let me know. What I'm gonna do, I know what I'll do. I'm gonna make a, uh, not a blog, but some type of, I uh, can't remember what they call it. I know I can set up a place where we can message each other in Brightspace, and I'm just going to make sort of a public forum where everyone can ask questions and I'll respond to them uh, there. And that way, if you have any questions about a particular video or about the uh, uh, course in general, you can ask them. Now, on the videos, I really do prefer, I, they're all going to be hosted by YouTube, so I really do prefer that any questions you have about course content be added as a comment, a, a YouTube comment. And because, I mean, it's certainly possible that I won't describe something or I'll forget to say something along the way that is critical to understanding the concepts I'm trying to present. So if you have any questions on the course content particularly, some, de some technical detail or what page number is this on or anything like that, please add a comment to the YouTube video, the particular YouTube video where you have the question, and I will answer it there. 
Uh, and that way, anyone who goes and watches the video will be able to access the comments as well. Now, I will say that the videos are going to be in Brightspace, or at least you can watch them through Brightspace, but to get to the comments, you'll have to go to the actual uh, YouTube uh, URL or address. Let me show you what I mean. If we go back to Student Help and Success, and we go to that how to study efficiently video my videos will be posted much like this okay where you can watch them in brightspace if you want to get the video address itself right click and say copy video url and then you can paste that address into another tab and it'll probably start playing automatically let me try to pause it there we go okay so so here is where i would want you to actually post comments and questions pertaining to the particular video because if we have a, a forum on Brightspace and you're trying to post questions about a particular video that you, you've got to reference which video you're talking about it's much better and I will get a, um, a note once you post a, um, a question on on YouTube I'll get a notification and that way I'll go back and I'll, I'll answer your question right there and then everyone can see it all right I think that's it for now I'm going to go fix the um, textbook links and also post a few more things, make that discussion area. I think that's what it's called as a discussion. And I look forward to class with you. I hope you'll learn a lot. I hope you'll enjoy the class and I hope you will give me feedback so that I can make the course better for you as, as we go. Um, I, I'm not particularly fond of this virtual education, uh, but you know, it's it's a chance for us to try some new things and experiment and, and hopefully all stay well and not get sick. So I look forward to the semester with you and I hope you have a good day.